of a baby boy is quite different from that of a baby girl. And she said, What in need of my to her, Mariama? But oh Allah, I have named her Mary. Mariam, Mary. Mary. Christianity in the Bible. C H R I S T I A N I T Y. Christianity. Where is it indicated in the Bible? Nowhere. If Christianity was the religion of God, God would have mentioned it by name. If it was the religion of Jesus, practiced by Jesus, Jesus would have mentioned it and he would have even invited the people, you know, to believe in Christianity. But Jesus never mentioned a religion called Christianity. You know? Christianity, look!
أعوذ بالله السميد العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مدل له ومن يدل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله رد شرح في صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقرة من لساني يفقه قولي I seek the protection and guidance of Allah against the insinuation of Satan, the rejected. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. All praises, worship, total submission and obedience belongs to Allah, the Lord, the sustainer, the controller, the wonderful originator and designer of the heaven and the earth and that which is between the heaven and the earth. I bear witness that there is no any other deity that deserves to be served and worship other than the Almighty Allah. And I bear witness that the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and the universal prophet that was signed by the Almighty Allah with an everlasting book known as the Holy Quran. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I greet you with the best greetings of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. On behalf of the Islamic Propagation Center, IPC Wari, in collaboration with the management of Dawood Mosque in this respected area, we are highly delighted to have been cordially invited in order to present a lecture entitled Jesus Christ in Islam. What Islam says about Jesus, the relationship between Jesus and Islam, and Islam, the position of Jesus and Islam in Islam, the mission of Jesus alayhi salam in Islam, the popularity of Jesus, the son of Mary, in Islam, and the comparative analysis between Islam and Christianity with respect or with regard to the personality and the mission of Jesus alayhi salam. This ground or this lecture is not only for the Muslims but also for the Christians of all denominations. Therefore, we are using this precious and golden opportunity to invite our Christian neighbors, business partners, doctors of divinity, the pastors, the bishops, the reverend fathers and reverend mothers, the various Christian denominations to come to this very important place because we are going to discuss about who Jesus Christ alayhi salam is. We are going to discuss not only in the light of the Holy Quran but also in the light of the Bible in order to prove to the Christians the real position and true message of Jesus alayhi salam. 
And we should remember that the Bible in the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32, the Bible says, Oh, come, let us reason together. Oh, come, let us reason together. That is what the Bible says. The Quran also agrees with what the Bible says, that we should come and reason together, we should come and dialogue together, we should come and iron out our differences and similarities together in order to have a common goal. Because whether you like it or not, whether you are a Muslim or Christian or pagan, or an atheist that does not believe in the existence of the Almighty God, or a free thinker, or a philosopher, you are created by the Almighty God. The God that created the Christians is the same God that created the Muslims, is the same God that created the pagans, is the same God that created the atheists. Just as the Almighty Allah says in the Holy Quran, He is the one that created you from among you, there are believers, and from among you, there are unbelievers. How then can we be able to iron out our differences by coming together to discuss our similarities and differences? Not in the light of our figment of imagination, but in the light of the divine revelation of the Almighty God, so that we will arrive to the truth. In Quran chapter 29, verse 46, Surah al al Kabut, Allah says, وَلَا تُجَادِلُوا أَحَلُ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا دَلَّتِي هِيَ أَحَسَنُ Dispute ye not with the people of the scriptures, the Jews and the Christians, except in the best way. Therefore, just as the Bible says that we should have dialogue together, the Quran also says that we should have dialogue together. Therefore, we are inviting the Christians to come here because our religion commanded us, the Muslims, to invite the Christians to the religion of Islam. And that is the job we are doing. The Quran chapter 3, verse 64, Surah Al-Ali Imran. Qul ya ahal al-kitab ta'alam ila Qul ya ahal al-kitab ta'alam ila kalimatin sawa'in baynana wa baynakum alla na'abuda illa Allah wa la nusirika bisa This is exactly what Allah said in the Quran. Just as the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, Oh come, let us reason together. And in the book of John chapter 8 verse 32, Jesus said, Seek ye the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Then the same Quran asked us to invite the Christians and reason with them. Quran says, Ya Ahl al-Kitab, O oh, you, the people of the scripture, the Jews and the Christians, Ta'alo, kum. Ila kalimatin sawa in bayna na wa bayna kum Allah na abuda illa na. Kum to a common platform, a common guidance, a common religion. And between us and you, that we should serve and worship all one God. Who is that God? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Moses, the God of Jesus, the God of Muhammad, the God of the angels, the God of the heavens, the God of the earth, the God that created everything, the God that has neither beginning of life, no end of life, the God that has no mother, no daughter, the God that has no wife, the God that has no brother, the God that has no sister, the God that has no beginning of life, no end of life, the God that created everything. Let us come and stop and worship that for my people. And that we should not in any way ascribe or associate any partnership to the Almighty God. We should not, you know, worship any other being other than the Almighty God. And the one of us should not raise an object of worship or patron beside the Almighty God. For interval now, that if they turn away from what you are coming them to or your invitation, that bear witness that we are of those that submit ourselves. You know, 
to Allah in Islam. That is we are Muslims. No compulsion whatsoever. Therefore, Allah commanded the Muslims to invite the Christians to Islam. So we are using this opportunity to invite the Christians of all denominations, whether the members of the Catholic Church, the members of the Anglican Church, the members of the Jehovah Witnesses, the members of the Seventh Day Adventist Church of Christ, the members of the Baptist Church, the members of the Assemblies of God Church, the members of the Brotherhood of the Cross and Staff founded by Olumba Olumba Obu of Calabar, the members of Cherubim and Cherubim, any church you belong to, come and let us reason together. Because Jesus is claimed to have believed, been believed by the Christians and also the Muslims believe in him. But we differ in our own description of Jesus alayhi salam. The Christians call Jesus God. And at the same time they call him the son of God. And other Christians call Mary, the mother of Jesus, a goddess. A goddess. And they address her as what? The mother of God. And others believe in what they call Trinity, that there are three gods in heaven. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They say the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And Mary herself is also another God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And yet these three gods are one God. I don't know where they get this formula of mathematics. Is it in the Bible this mathematics? That God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Where did Jesus claim that he is God? Please make sure that whenever you are coming here, come along with your Bible. Come along with your Bible if you are coming here. Come along with your Bible. Any Bible you have, bring it. Whether the King James Version, the Revised Standard Version, the Good News Bible, the Living Bible, the International Bible, the New American Bible, the Jehovah Witness Bible, the New English Bible, you know, the Catholic Christian Bible, the Lord Book of the Bible, and the Protestant Book of Eden, the New English Bible, the Everyday Bible, any Bible, any Bible, whether the Bible with 73 books, that is the Catholic Bible, or the one with 66 books, the Protestant Bible, or the one with 81 books, bring it. Let us reason together. Now, if we want to know who somebody is, we have to go into the historical background, his origin. We have to study the life of his parents, how he emerged, in order to know his own true personality. And I don't believe, or I don't know, whether the Christians have studied the historical origin of Jesus alayhi salam before they decided to call him God or before they decided to call him the Son of God. I don't know. You know, so the bond of contention between the Muslims and the Christians is that while on the side of the Christians they believe that Jesus is their God, Jesus is the Son of God, Mary the mother of Jesus is the mother of God, you know, and they believe in trial God, three gods, three gods in heaven. Why the Muslims believe in Jesus as a prophet of God, a messenger of God, a servant of God. The Muslims do not believe that Jesus is God, and Jesus never claimed to be God. So we are going to see where lies the truth. Is it in Islam or in what the Christians are saying? If we are speaking the truth, then you come to us and embrace the religion of Islam so that you will have salvation on that indeducible day of judgment. And if you are saying the truth and you have reasons, scriptural and rational reasons, to back up your argument, then we follow you. That is the argument. That is the argument. If you can be able to show me in your Bible where God Almighty say I should go to church on Sunday, then I will follow you. Or you can show me in the Quran where it is said that I should go to church on Sunday, I follow you. And if you cannot show me in the Bible or in the Quran where it is written that I should go to church on Sunday, 
And I show you in the Quran where it is written that you should go to mosque on Friday and even in the Bible, then you follow me and embrace Islam. Oh. That is that. Then let us see who is Jesus. First, Allah start telling us about the origin of Jesus. Where Jesus originated? In the Allah has Adama. In Allah has Adama. And this Allah has chosen Adam. Adam was the first human being to be created by the Almighty God. The Bible mentioned that in the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, that Adam was the first human being to be created by the Almighty God. And the Holy Quran mentioned that also in Quran chapter 15 verse 29 and also Quran chapter 12 verse 13, that Adam was the first human being to be created by the Almighty God without a father or without a mother. He was the first man that appeared on earth. There was no human being that existed before Adam. Even according to the archaeologists, you know, they quite agree that Adam was the first man that dwelt on earth. So Allah has chosen Adam to be his prophet. Manuan, and he has chosen Noah, Wa'ala Ibrahim, and the families of Abraham. Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob. Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob. You know, and those prophets that emerged from Ishmael and Isaac, like Jesus, like David, like Solomon, like Zachariah, like John the Baptist, like Moses, like Aaron, and other Israelite prophets from the lineage of Abraham through Isaac, through Jacob. And from the other son of Abraham called Ishmael, the first son of Abraham, we have the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that descended from Abraham, you know, through Ishmael. So Allah said, he had chosen Abraham and his families. Wa'ala Imrana, as well as the families of Imran. Imran, the father of Moses, Meaning, the first Imran, the father of Moses and Aaron. Then we have the second Imran, the father of, you know, the father of Mary, who was the mother of Jesus. Meaning, the grandfather of Jesus, Imran, al al alamin above the men of the nation of their own respective generation. Zuriyatan. Zuriyatan Babwa. They were all brothers, descendants, correlated with one another. Of the same progeny, of the same spiritual brotherhood. All of them descended from who? From Adam alayhi salam, genealogically. Wallahu Sami'ul Ali. And Allah is the one hiara and all knower of everything. إذ قالت امرأة إمران رب إني نذرت لك ما في بدني محررا فتقبل مني إنك أنت السميع العليم الله وسلم في محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم an incident that took place more than 570 years back before he was born. Remember, Iskalat Imra'at Imrana, remember when the wife of Imran said, Rabbi, my Lord, in Nina Zarchola Kamati Batni Muharrara, I have dedicated to your service that which is in my womb to serve you in the temple, to worship you, O Allah. Accept this service from me, accept this sacrifice from me, O Allah. For you are the hearer of supplication and the knower of everything. So, the wife of Imran called Hannah in her old age could not give birth to a son. Her husband, Imran, in his old age could not give birth to a son. She was barren, she could not give birth. 
and she prayed to the Almighty God along with her husband that if God Almighty should answer their prayer to the south song to her she will dedicate that child for the service of God in the temple and God accepted their prayer and when her husband met her she became pregnant and when Hannah became pregnant she took back of her own promise that she made to the Almighty God that she would dedicate that child for the service of God in the temple of Solomon by Salamakadda. And she asked Allah, you know, to bless her womb, you know, to accept it and also to honor it. And Allah accepted. Mm -hmm. فلما وضعتها قالت ربي إني وضعتها أنسا ولا أعلم بما وضعت وليس الذكر كنوسا وإني سميتها مريم وإني أعيدها بك وذريتها من الشيء When Hannah gave back to her baby girl, Allah she said, Rabbi my Lord, the new one out of her own side, I have given back to a baby girl. Though she was expecting a baby boy, because she wanted to dedicate that child for the service of God in the temple. And a woman at that time, according to their tradition and custom, was not allowed to work in the temple. Therefore she said, Oh Lord, I have given birth to a baby girl instead of a baby boy that I expected. Wallahu a'alam bi ma wada and Allah knew what she delivered. He knew his own plan. The of a baby boy is quite different from that of a baby girl. And she said, Wa inni sammaitu ha Maryama. But oh Allah, I have named her Mary. Maryam, Mary. Mary. And I seek refuge, O oh Allah, from you. You know, for her and her progeny against the devil, the apostle. So she prayed for her daughter, newly born baby, Maryam. Now, Mary was born by Hannah and Imran. Imran was the father of Mary. And Hannah was the mother of Mary. Then what happened? And her Lord, the Almighty God, accepted her with a fair acceptance. Allah accepted the prayer of the mother of Mary for her to be accepted to walk in the temple in spite of the fact that a woman was not allowed to walk in that particular temple. So Allah accepted her. You know, and Allah made her to grow in a miraculous way. You know, and the, the proportion of growing was so fast. She was growing, you know, gradually she was growing in a miraculous way. And Allah entrusted her to the care of Zachariah. Meaning, she was entrusted to the care of Zachariah. Who was that Zachariah at that time? Zachariah was the chief imam of that temple of Solomon. Himself, in his own age, he has no other son, he has no daughter, and he was looking for son and daughter. And he was also a prophet of Allah, Zachariah. So in a miraculous way, Mary 
was entrusted to Zachariah, meaning Zachariah was be to be was to be the guardian of Mary. And Zachariah came to the temple and built a separate apartment for Mary. And Mary was put there. At that time she was just about ten years. She was put inside that apartment. What was she used to do to be doing? She was used to sweeping the most, taking care of the most and doing everything there, you know? And she had her own separate chamber. Whenever Zachariah went there in order to see Mary, whether the end of her star, he would find some kind of provision, some kind of food with Mary. He was not the one that brought the food. And he was the only person that was allowed to go there. He said, Mary, where do you get this food? Because the food was so miraculous. If it was in the rainy season, he would see the food of the dry season. If it was in the dry season, he would see the food of the rainy season. And he would ask Mary, Mary, where do you get this food? Allah and Mary would see. Who are men in the last? This is from Allah. Allah sent an angel to bring this food for me. Inna Allah yarzuku man yasha'u bi ghayri hisab. For Allah enrich whomsoever he wishes with all measurement. If Allah wants, kun fa yakun will work on you now. You become a lawyer. True legal means, not illegal means. Kun fa yakun. You know? So instantaneously, the heart of Zachariah was recapitulated with the power and the mercy and the blessings of the Almighty Allah. Then let us go to the visitation of the angel of God to Mary when he met her in the temple. If I let the Okay. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Islam, we have seen from the Quranic point of view how Mary, the mother of Jesus, was born by Imran and Hannah and what happened, the miracles that happened in her life about the divine provision. I am telling you, there is no any other book on earth that you can find this account of the birth of Mary other than the, in the Quran. Oh. Other than in the Quran. You cannot find it in the Bible. The Christians do not know how Mary was born. Because it's not mentioned in their own Bible. Oh. It's not there. The account of Mary. If you want to know about Mary, come to Islam. We teach you who Mary was. The account of Mary is nowhere mentioned in any Bible. But it's mentioned in the Muslim Quran. Then, when Mary was in that temple, the angels of God appeared to Mary. Behold, the angel said, Ya Maryam, O Mary. Under the leadership of Angel Gabriel, they came to Mary and the angel said, Ya Maryam, O Mary, inna Allah has tafaki wa tahtaraki wa tafaki ala nisa il alameen. Allah has chosen you. Allah has chosen you and purified you. Meaning, from all kinds of abominations, Allah has purified you. Allah has chosen you to walk in the temple in spite of the fact that women are not allowed to walk in that particular temple of Solomon in Jerusalem. You have been chosen and you have been purified. You have been cleansed from all kinds of what? From all kinds of immorality. And Allah has chosen you to be above the women of the nation of your own respective time. Then the angel says, Ya Maria Mokonuti. Ya Maria Mokonuti, Le Rabbiki was Judi or Kai Maraki. The angel says, Ya Maria Mokonuti, Le Rabbiki, O Mary, be obedient to your Lord, continue to serve your Lord, the Almighty God. 
you know when you and prostrate yourself in prayer when you are not in prayer you are bowed down and worship along with those that bow down and worship in prayer this indicates that in the temple of Solomon they used to observe Salat there um. and Zachariah was the chief imam of the temple of Solomon before Zachariah came, Imran, the father of Mary, was the chief imam of that particular mosque. Oh. And later Zachariah took over from Imran when he died before the birth of Mary, his daughter. He died when his wife, Hannah, was pregnant with Mary. So Mary was asked to pray along with the priest. And how did they used to pray? The Bible made us to understand all the prophets of God. The way the Muslims are, are praying, and that is how all the prophets of God are praying. Here in the Bible, I will demonstrate in the presence of the Muslims, the Christians, the pagans, the free thinkers, everybody, this Islamic system of prayer here before the end of our lecture. We will do the prayer here in the presence of everybody. We will read the Bible and we will pray the way you see the Muslims praying. It's mentioned in the Bible that all the prophets of God observe their prayer. Genesis chapter 17 verse 3, the Bible says that Abraham fell down on his face and he worshipped the Almighty God he prayed. The Bible mentioned in the book of Numbers chapter 20 verse 5 to 6 that Moses and Aaron prayed the way the Muslims do. He fell down on his, they fell down on their faces and they sat and worshipped the Almighty God. The Bible says in the book of Daniel chapter 6 but then that uh, Daniel fell down on his face and he worshipped God. The Bible says in the book of Joshua chapter 5 verse 14 to 15 that Joshua fell down on his face and he sat and worshipped the Almighty God. The Bible mentioned in the book of Psalm 95 verse 6 that uh, David said, he called his people, Oh come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel down and prostrate with our faces to the ground before the Lord our Maker. The Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 11 verse 16 that the angels of God fell down and prostrated on the ground with their faces to the ground. The Bible says about Ezra the high priest according to the book of Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 46 that Ezra leads Jumu'ah congregational prayer with the Imam of the people, shoulder to shoulder. He recited to us with Fatiha, praising God, and they all answered, Amen, Amen. Ezra raised his hands to the level of his ears, and they raised their hands, and Ezra said, Allahu Akbar, they say, Allahu Akbar, and Ezra went to the position of prostration, with his position to the ground. He said, Sami Allahu Liman Hanada. They also did the same thing and went to the position of prostration. On the ground. We are going to read it and demonstrate. Then the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 26 verse 39 that Jesus also fell down on his face and he worshipped the Almighty Allah. So Mary was asked to do the same thing. You know? If Allah is the man of the Aquarium, it is the same as the Aquarium. The same as the Aquarium. This is part of the silence of the chief on scene. This is an incident that took place in your absence, O Muhammad. You were not there when Mary was born. You were not there when Mary was placed in the temple. You were not there when the angel of God appeared unto Mary, bringing the divine food to her. You were not there when the birth of Jesus was announced to Mary. You were not there, O Muhammad. But no, he he elaika. But we reveal this knowledge to you through our angel, Angel Gabriel. Allah brought that news. And before the coming of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Jesus mentioned in the book of John, chapter 16, verses 12 to 14, that Muhammad will come, Muhammad will come, Muhammad will come, after me, and I call. John chapter 16, verses 12 to 14, Jesus said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot hold them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, come, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatsoever he shall hear from God, that is what he will speak. For he will receive some information about me, and he will pass this information to you. And he will make me to be honored, and he will show you the judgment to come. Jesus used about eight masculine genders 
see when he come, when he come, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatsoever he shall hear from God, that is what he will speak. Who is this he? Who is this he? He, he that Jesus was talking about. Muhammad. Muhammad. Because there was no any other process that came after Jesus alayhi salam with a universal message like the Quran, other than the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he tells us a lot of things about Jesus that is what Jesus mentioned in the book of John chapter 16 verse 2 to 14 about the coming of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِمْ إِذْ يُلْقُونَ أَكَلَامَهُمْ You know, we are not with them when they cast off with arrows أَيُّهُمْ يَقُولُ مَرْيَمْ As to which one of them should be in charge of the care of Mary Because before Mary came under the guardianship of Zachariah you know, they have to cast off with arrows and you know, uh, Zachariah won. وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِمْ إِذْ يَتَسِمُونَ You know, we are you with them when they disputed about the matter Then, the angels for that told Mary إذ قالت الملائكة يا مريم إن الله يبشرك بكلمة منه اسمه المسيح عيسى بن مريم نعم وجيهم في الدنيا والآخرة ومن المقربين Then the angel told me إذ قالت الملائكة يا مريم Behold the angel says to me, Inna allaha yubal shurifu de kalimat men. Allah, the almighty God, is giving you the glad tidings, the good news, the announcement of a pronouncement, a word, a command, a particular creation from him that he wanted to create in your womb. Ismo hul wasiha isha bun mariam. And the name of that particular fatherless child you are going to give birth to is the Messiah, Jesus, and he will be addressed after your name, the son of Mary, Isa ibn Maryam, as he does not have, he did not have any human father. So he will be addressed after the name of his mother, Mary, Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus, the son of Mary. He will be held with honor in this world, meaning he will be appointed as a prophet of God. And Mary was listening to the angel. Walakira, and in the hereafter he will be in the company of the prophet of God. You know, Wamin al Mutarrabin, he will be in the company of those very close to Allah. Then what happens? وَيُكَلِّمُ النَّاسَ فِي الْمَهَدِ وَكَهَلًا وَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Mary was listening to the voice of this angel that was talking to her, describing her son even before the son was born. Well, you can live on last at and that child will speak to the people as a child and also in the credit. The day that child is born, he will start speaking and preaching to the people. Well, him, and he will be in the company of the righteous. Uh -huh. <laughs> نعم قال كذلك الله يخلق ما يشاء نعم إذا قضى أمرا فإنما يقول له كن فيكون أعلت ميري أف دي أنجل أن لا يكون لي ولد How can I be able to give back to a son ونم يمسسني بشر When no man has touched me I don't have any husband I did not have any kind of knowledge with any man. How will I give back to a son? She was asking the angel. Then the angel told her, Allah kadaliki, Allah rabbuki, Allah kadaliki lahu yakuluku maisha. That even so, your Lord says that he created whatsoever he wishes to create. He created Adam without a father and without a mother. He created Eve, the wife of Adam, without a mother. He created the angels from life. The angels are fatherless and motherless and senseless. The angels. God created them from life. Therefore, the same God that created Adam without a father and without a mother, the same God that created Eve, the wife of Adam, without a mother, is the same God that will create Jesus in your womb without having a father. Yeah. Why? Because with God all things are possible. 
With God, all things are possible. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26 in the Bible. The Bible says, with God, all things are possible. It was Jesus that made that statement. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. With God, all things. There is nothing impossible with God. So the God that created Adam, the God that created Eve without a mother, the God that created the angels is the same God that will create Jesus in your womb without a father. And Mary has to submit. She has to what? She has to submit. You know? Yakaruko Maisa. Whenever God decided to create anything, God will only say unto it, Be! And it will be. If God wanted to create millions of Jesuses, here, He will say, Appear. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, with God, all things are what? Possible. Appear, and they will appear. Why? Because when you read the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, God says, let there be light. And there was light. Then God went and started manipulating, gesticulating with his hands like an electrician. Before he wired himself, he said, let there be light, and the light came in. Let there be darkness, and the darkness appear. Let the darkness be separated from the light, and it happened. Let the emperor was living creatures according to their kind, and it happened. Whatever God desires to do, He says, "Be," because God is not a laborer. To so say, "Bring wood, bring nail, bring split, bring this," you know. Yaka roko maisha. Ida kara amra pa ena maya kulo na buko pa yoko. Moyo ane mukul kitaba. Moyo ane mukul kitaba. Wali kimata watawre ta walindi. Moyo ane mukul kitaba wali hikima. Allah will teach Jesus the book, writing, how to write, how to write. Wali hikima and wisdom. He will be given prophetic wisdom. Power of speech and knowledge God will give him. What Tawrita will engage. And Allah, the Almighty God, will teach Jesus the Torah, the book of Moses. That was the reason why Jesus used to quote from the book of Moses. One in jail, and he will be given the gospel. And of course, we are told by Jesus that the message he brought and his teachings did not belong to him. He was not the originator of these messages. According to what the Bible says, in the book of John, chapter 12, verse 49, Jesus said, I have not spoken on my own authority, but the God who sent me gave me the commandment, gave me the knowledge, gave me the book of what I shall say and what I shall speak unto you. All these things you hear me talking to you, as Jesus said, he said, it's not my own. I received this order and instruction and this commandment and this knowledge from God. John chapter 12 verse 49. And the same in the book of John chapter 7 verse 16, he said, My teachings, my teachings does not belong to me. My teachings does not belong to me. That my teachings belong to God who sent me. Who sent Jesus? Oh. Can God send another God? Oh. Do you think that God will send you to send a drama? <laughs> God send him another God. <laughs> no. We have only one God in control of the universe. And Jesus himself was subjected to God. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45. Jesus himself will be subjected to the commandment of the Almighty God. According to what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45. You see? So Allah taught him the book. Now, let us look at the fulfillment of the prophecy. How the fulfillment takes place of the prophecy of the birth of Jesus. How the angel announced unto Mary how she will give birth and how that thing happened. How Jesus was born and what happened when Jesus Christ was born. Because this thing is not in the Bible. Was fulfilled in the Bible. Now, in the Quran, Maryam, the account of Mary, the story of Mary. One day, Mary left her family 
and she went to take her bath. You know, in the eastern part of the temple of Solomon in Jerusalem, she went to take her bath, to bath, to bath. She went there innocently without any expectations. She just went there in order to bath. Then what happened? <coughs> Mary used a screen, a veil, in order to veil herself, to cover herself where she was to take the bath. Meaning, she just closed that place, rounded the place with her veil, with her garment, with her hijab, and covered that place where she was to take the bath. And she entered there, and she took her bath. Mary took her bath. And immediately Mary, after finishing the bath, Mary was about to come out of the bathroom and she saw a man from nowhere without any trace of joining standing erectly vertically in her front in her front and Allah said we said unto Mary our Holy Spirit our angel angel Gabriel was sent to Mary and the angel appears unto Mary as a man, in all respect, a handsome man. When Mary just come out, she just saw a man standing. And Mary became flabbergasted. She became aghast. She became motionless. She did not know what to see. She was speechless. And instantaneously, Mary said, Immediately she saw this man by the gift of her bathroom when she came up. Kala she said, I take refuge with the most gracious God against you. If you do fear God, come not near me. That was to show how pure she was. You know how holy she was. She was thinking that they might her and distort her work, her image. And she said, I seek the protection of the most gracious Allah against your wickedness. If you fear God, don't come me. Don't not come near me. Don't touch my body. Then the angel says, I am. Then the man, meaning the angel, told Mary, I am not a human being. I am not a human being. But in the man, I am a human being. I am only the messenger of your Lord, and the purpose of my coming is to bestow on you, unto you, the gift of having a holy child, the gift. We don't have husband, but Allah, out of his love, has chosen you. Out of his love, you are not a human being. But Allah, out of his knowledge, out of his power, out of his plan, out of his divine authority, decided to create a fatherless child. To give you a child without a father. You know, so Mary became motionless and she asked a question. Mary asked the question, Allah Trab, my Lord, Anna Yakuna Dibulam, how can I be able to give back to Islam? Walam Yam Sasbi Bashar and when no man has touched me, Walam Aku Bagia and I'm not a harlot or prostitute. I did not come into any sexual contact with any man. I don't have husband and I'm not a prostitute. How can I be able to give back to a son? Then the angel says, 
to answer your question that how can you give back to a son when you don't have any husband you did not come into contact with any man you are not a harlot or prostitute so the reply to your question is the god that created a man without a man is the same god that will create a man in your womb without a man meaning the god that created adam without a father is the same god that will create jesus in your womb without a father the god that created eve the wife of adam without a mother is the same god that will create jesus in your womb without your father because with god all things are possible amen قال كذلك قال ربك even so die not yet who are alay ya hayyun it is easy for me there is nothing impossible with god with god all things are possible matthew chapter 19 verse 26 mark chapter 1 verse 37 jeremiah chapter 31 verse 17 with god all things are possible walina alahu ayatan lana and we wish to appoint him as a sign unto men a miracle a supernatural wonder for people to see and glorify the Almighty God that can create in whatsoever way He wishes. Wa rahmatun lana and imati from the Almighty Allah to the children of Israel. Wa kana amran makadiya. The angel says that it is a decree that has been finalized by the Almighty Allah. Allah has already ordained it and decreed it, and it will happen. My own, I only come in order to tell you, this, to let you know. I come in order to let you know that this is what God is about to do. To create Jesus in your womb without a father. And with God all things are possible. You know, then what happened? Instantaneously, Mary became pregnant. Now, we want to ask a question. Because the Islamic point of view on how Mary became pregnant is quite different from the Christian point of view. Do you know what the Christians are saying? They say that it was the Almighty God in heaven. He left his throne in heaven and he descended and entered the womb of Mary and he was born as God man. God man. God man. And a man, my God. Some say Jesus is 100% God. Jesus is 100% man. Now, mystery of man and God. Which means that they don't believe in the power of the Almighty God. So they say Jesus is God in human flesh. Now God lives there. He come to see His people. He come to see His people. So they cannot see them from there. No, He come to see them to experience their suffering. Hey, you know how did Mary became pregnant? For her mother to Mary became pregnant, she conceived. And how did that happen? Do you know what happened? Immediately after the angel announced to her. The angel just blew. He just blew. He blew the breeze of life. That breeze found its way and passed through the sleep of Mary and went into the vulva of Mary and materialized in the womb of Mary as a child. Oh. And all of us, it was the same thing. Every child before you are born, Wallahi Allah sent an angel to blow a life-giving soul. He sent an angel to blew a life giving soul. The same thing, this angel blew a life giving soul directly without using a man, without any sexual insemination. For God to show you that He can create without the, you know, without the intervention of a man and a woman. He created Jesus in the womb of Mary. That breeze materialized in the womb of Mary and became a child. And the angel disappeared. Then what happened? You know, Muhammad Latu, she conceived. Allah tell us, and she went with that pregnancy to a remote place. Allah also reminded us, one that he asked and found Mary who protected 
sufficient chastity. For if Allah has given her the spirit, we bring it to her of our spirit. What Allah has given her, I tell the Almighty, and we make her and her son as a sign. You know, to one kind, a sign, a wonder, a miracle. Then Mary went with that pregnancy. But Takazad Bihi, but Takazad Bihi Makana Kasiya, and she went with that pregnancy to a remote place, a distant place. And he. Faja al Makabu ila jizan nakalat qalat ya leitani mitqar lahada wa kuntu nisiyam masiya. Faja al Makabu ila jizan nakalat. Let me end this book. Faja al Makabu ila jizan nakalat. The tenth of child bearing drove Mary to the trunk of a palm tree. She was laboring. She was feeling the pain. Because she was about to give birth. She was a woman then. And the pain, you know how a pregnant woman used to behave. And she went to the trunk of a dead palm tree. And she said, yeah, later she cried in her anguish. Mr. Kabla Haza, had it been I died before this incident happened unto me. Well, come to nothing, Marcia. And became something forgotten and out of sight. Then what happened? <laughs> She had a voice calling her from Dennis her, Allah to Hadali, saying, Don't worry, Mary, grieve not. Kanja Allah Rabbuki Tahasake Sariya, for your Lord has provided a rebellion, holy water under you. It was unproductive place, but that place where Jesus was about to be born, Allah made water to put out of the ground for Mary to drink. If you come across any other human being and he asks you as to where you get that, you know, to sakita alayki rutub al janiya, it will not fall dry red fruit upon you. Tree. What shall I be and drink from that water? What are the aina and comfort your eyes? Be happy as we are going to become the mother, but 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 in Kau Naika Rudi. You get it? Comfort your eyes as we are going to become the mother of a prophet. But in Matara Yen the Mena Bashari Ahada, if you come across any other human being and he asks you as to where you get that child, but only in Nina Zantun Rahman Salma, say that I have vowed myself to fight before the most gracious Allah for that who can live on Yoma in here and that today I will not talk to any other human being. Then what happened? <laughs> to Jesus and after washing him, bathing him, she took Jesus on her shoulder and she was walking majestically, majestically, majestically along the temple of Solomon in Jerusalem. She took Jesus walking with Jesus on her shoulder. You know, Hallelujah Mariam. When her people saw Mary parading with a fatherless child, naturally they have to question her. Ya Maria, they say, Ya Oh Mary, like I did it to Shai and Faria, you have come with a new thing, a mighty thing, a helpful thing. Ya Uchaham. Ya Uchaham, Nama Kana Abukim Rasaw, Imma Kana Tumuki Bagiya. Your father was not a wicked man. Your mother was not a prostitute. Where do you get that part for that child? Mary pointed to the child that they should ask him. How do you expect us to speak with a child in the trading? A newly born baby. How? Mm-hmm. 
Then Jesus started speaking to them in defense of his mother. And Jesus said, the very day he was born, Allah in need of your law. And indeed, I am the servant of Allah. Allah has given me the book. Wada Allah ni nabiya. Allah has made me to be his prophet. Wada Allah ni mubarak and ayla makuntu. Allah has made me blessed where to ever I may be. Wa outside ni this salat wa zakati. Madum ka haya. Allah has enjoyed on me prayer and charity as long as I live. Wa baram biwana dati wa lam yaja anni jabara shakiya. Allah has made me to be kind and and obedience to my mother, not to be aggressive to my mother. What salam wa alayya? The peace of Allah is on me. Yawma wulitu, the day that I was born. Wa yawma amutu, the day that I shall die. Wa yawma ufafa hayya. And on the final day of judgment, when Allah will bring me back to life. That was the first miracle performed by Jesus on earth according to the Holy Quran. He spoke to the people on the very day he was born. Is this miracle in the Bible? No. This miracle is not in the Bible. If you want to see this miracle, you can only see it in the Holy Quran. Because the Bible tells us that Jesus did many other miracles, signs and wonders in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in the Bible. Therefore, we are inviting the Christians to come and believe in Jesus as a prophet of God, Jesus as a man of God, Jesus as a servant of God, Jesus as a messenger of God, and Jesus as a Muslim. Because Jesus did not go to church, he never preached Christianity, he never invited any person to accept Christianity as a religion, even the word Christianity, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N-I-T-Y, is not in the Bible. Allah it's not mentioned in the Bible. There is nothing called Christianity in the Bible because it was not the religion of Jesus and his Islam. Even the word Christian never came out of the mouth of Jesus. You cannot see it here. Therefore, we are using this opportunity to invite all the Christians to come and embrace the religion of Islam. And if you have any questions, you are free to come and ask your questions. There are many verses in the Bible that indicated that Jesus Christ is not God, but Jesus is only a humble messenger and a servant and a prophet of the Almighty God. If you want to see where those verses are located in your Bible, you can ask us questions. We will give you the reference. You open your Bible and you see it. And if you don't have a Bible, with you, we have the Bible that we will borrow you without receiving a single couple from you. We will give you the Bible to open and read without receiving a single couple from you. So Alhamdulillah, we are stopping here because it is time for our own uh, prayer salat. Uh, the first question that was asked was, this prayer that we just made, this Asar prayer, or Jabba'a prayer, is it mentioned in the Bible? Is it mentioned in the Bible? I say yes, it's mentioned in the Bible. Maybe I will keep my Bible and allow you to come with your Bible. Please, if you have your Bible, I want you to open the book of Isaiah, the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verses 4 to 6. We are going to do it here, just as the Bible says we should do it. And you will see it, please. Who can read the Bible perfectly? Who can read the Bible perfectly? Eh? I want somebody that can read. Who can read? Somebody can read. Somebody can read. Somebody can read. Yeah, the people. Okay. Is there a people on side? I want you to read louder. Louder. I want you to read louder to the hearing of people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 4 to 6. From 4 to 6 here. You can put my microphone. I see the reader. Now, where we go to demonstrate our work. And if I call your name, please, if I call you, just come here. And I hate to call you, not begin to call you. <laughs> Now you go arrest the staff who not with you. Read one after the other. Yes. And Ezra. And Ezra. Never, never. And Ezra. And Ezra. And Ezra. Describe. Describe. Stood upon. Stood upon. A pulpit of a wood. A pulpit of wood. Do you know the meaning of pulpit? That thing that they used to place in the mosque where the Imam used to stand to deliver Simon. That is what is called pulpit, made of wood. Mm -hmm. Which they, which they had made for the purpose. Which 
Christ they have met for the purpose, many for the purpose of prayer. O Simon. And beside him. And beside him, I do mean I am the Ezra. I do mean I am the Ezra and I am standing of Forty. And beside him stood Matisia. Stood Matisia, Matisia come. Matisia. Matisia come. Oh, beside me. Oh, Matisia. Wait. Uh-huh. Yeah. Continue. And Shema. Shema, come. Beside me. And Anai. And Anai, come, Anai. And uh, Orija. Orija. Okay, Orija, don't come. Uh -huh. and, and Hilkia. Hilkia, stand. Uh -huh. And Mahasia. Mahasia, where is Mahasia? I will look, look for you since I don't see you, Mahasia. <laughs> On his right hand. On his right hand. They are standing on his right hand. On and the right, right hand of Ezra. I do it is the right hand. Uh -huh. And on his left hand. on his left hand. And on my left hand, that is I. I am the Ezra. Uh -huh. Pedia. Pedia. Where is Pedia? Come here. Pedia. What is the Pedia? They will call you this. Uh -huh. And your and uh, Michael and Michael, Michael sir, and Malshia, Malshia, and, and Hashum, Hashum, stay there, and Ashabad, Ashabad, Ashabadana, Ashabadana, then Zakaria, and Zakaria, and Muslim, and Muslim, okay, this are they. Now the Bible arranged them here. I do know the Bible arranged them. Very good. Continue, sir. And Ezra opened the book. And Ezra opened the book. I am the Ezra now. I opened the book. To in deliver the, my photograph. In the sight of all the people. In the sight of all the people. I am now delivering my photograph before them. In the sight of all the people. Uh, Hotoba, Hotoba, you know the Imam when he wants to deliver Hotoba. For he was imam. above all the people. For he was above all the people, meaning he was in front of all the people. He was the chief Imam. Uh -huh. And when he opened it, and he, when he opened it, all the people stood up. And all the people stood up. Continue. And is a blessed the Lord. And they, now they stood up. You know, now Ezra blessed the Lord. The great God. Before that, Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. What is the meaning of Allah Akbar? God is the great. Now, Ezra, I am the Ezra now. I want to, no, no, listen, before I give you order. Now I want to praise God. I will do it in Arabic and I will translate it. When Ezra blessed God, what happened? The great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen. All the people answered, Amen, Amen, that is Amen, Amen. Now listen, I want to praise God, the way we pray, listen, listen, I want to praise God. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Malik, Yawmiddin. إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الشراط المستقيم شراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المردود عليهم ولا الدالين Then continue, listen, continue With lifting up their hands With lifting up their hands الله أكبر And they bow their heads They bow their heads الله أكبر and worship the Lord with their faces <laughs> to the ground. And worship the Lord with their faces to the ground. Allah. Even Jesus did the same thing in the book of Matthew chapter 26 verse 39. Jesus the son of Mary fell down on his face and he sat and worshiped the Almighty God. In the book of Matthew chapter 26 verse 39. So this act of worship we are worshiping is an act of the Almighty God, a command from the Almighty God. Abraham also did the same thing. 
Et de vous comme j'en suis sur sa tradition basterie. Abraham also fell down on his face and he worshiped the Almighty God. The same thing with the angels of God. Because when you read the book of Isaiah chapter 45, verse 23, God says, By myself I have swear, and from my mouth has gone forth a word that shall not return. Unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. That is that. So that is the Islamic prayer. All the prophets of God pray in this way. They pray with to do. Bowing and prostrating. Who are they worshiping? The Almighty God. We Muslims, we don't worship Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Prophet Muhammad is not our God. We worship the Almighty God that has no beginning of life. The Almighty Trinity, the Almighty Olon, the Almighty Abbasi, the Almighty Ogene, the Almighty Tamuno, the Almighty Ubangiti, the Almighty Allah. The God that has no beginning of life. No end of life. The God that created the angels from life. The God that created Adam without a father and without a mother. The God that created Eve, the wife of Adam, without a mother. The God that created Jesus, the son of Mary, without a father. The God that created you and I from father and mother. The God that created the heaven without any pillar or foundation that you can see. The God that created the mountain, the ocean, the sea, the animals. Both aquatic and terrestrial animals. We worship him alone without ascribing any partnership to him. If you have any further question, come and ask your question. Then you should know that Adam was a Muslim, Israel was a Muslim, Abraham was a Muslim, Noah was a Muslim, Enoch was a Muslim, Elijah was a Muslim, Elisha was a Muslim, Zachariah was a Muslim, John the Baptist was a Muslim, Jeremiah was a Muslim, Jesus was a Muslim, Jacob was a Muslim, Isaiah was a Muslim, Job was a Muslim, Jesus was a Muslim, Mary was a Muslim, all the prophets of God. If you can show me in any of the versions of the Bible where Jesus go to church and where Jesus commanded you to go to church on Sunday, I am ready to become a Christian. Simple evangelism. I want to see a verse in the Bible where Jesus go to church and where Jesus commanded you to go to church on Sunday. It's okay for me. Nowhere. I ask this question at the Minnesota Constitution Center Board in Canada. That where in the Bible, in the presence of the pastor, the bishop, the reverend fathers and reverend mothers, that I want to see in the Bible where Jesus went to church on Sunday. Or where Jesus commanded his people to go to church on Sunday. I was asking all the Christian bishop, pastors and reverend fathers, please I want that verse. Please, maybe I have forgotten that verse. If anyone knows that verse, let him show me that particular verse. All the Christians were looking at me. And one Christian say, Pastor, you know the good teller. <laughs> if you know Tela, I know you agree, or I know you won't talk to you. The pastor immediately he looked at the man and found that he was a member of the church. He just took a Herculean effort and he just came to me. He said, give me the microphone and I give him the microphone. He said, repeat that question again. I say, I want you to show me in your Bible where it is written that you, the Christian, should go to church on Sunday. I was thinking that he was going to quote the bar. He said, okay, you will come. Where are you? You used to go to Friday mosque. Where are you told in the Holy Quran that you should go to Friday mosque? Allah. <laughs> in the Holy Quran. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you Muslims, idha nudiya lis salati min yawm al-jum'a. Whenever you go, a call is made on Friday for the observance of Friday prayer. Come out in Azikir Allah, have to the remembrance of Allah, close your shop, water the bike, and leave all businesses and go to the mosque. Everywhere on Friday in America, you see the Muslims going to mosque. On the same Friday, Tunisia, England, everywhere you go. And the Muslims have the same system of prayer anywhere you go in the world. The Muslims have the same system of prayer. In the same way, 
the Muslims in America, the Muslims in China, the Muslims in France, the Muslims in Ghana, the Muslims in Togo, the Muslims in Nigeria, the Muslims in Saudi Arabia, the Muslims in Canada, the Muslims in Germany, the Muslims in Australia, the Muslims in India, the Muslims in Japan, the Muslims in all parts of the world, we have the same system of worship. And this is mentioned in Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 9. The book of Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 9. You know that in the last day I will change the language of the people into a few language that they will all put the name of the Lord and worship God shoulder to shoulder in the same language. So I am telling you that Islam is the final religion, is the universal religion of God. And what is Islam? Islam is the religion of total submission and obedience to the commandment of God. Islam is not Muhammadan, we don't worship Muhammad. The name of the religion is Islam. That is the religion of total submission to God. To serve and worship the Almighty God. That is just the meaning of what? That is just the meaning of the word Islam. It is not the figment of imagination of any person. But it is the religion ordained by the Almighty God. It was the religion of all the prophets that came from God. That is why even Jesus said that. He did not come to condemn the law of Moses and the teachings of the prophet. Then he came to, to fulfill them. He was following the same religion with Moses and other prophets of God. The same thing Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know? So Islam is one. Any other question? Uh, uh, question number one. The one of this cup. Question. Please come and ask your question. Please, uh, our brother, our Christian brethren, you are. Uh, our question was start by. I will first of all start by introducing myself. Inshallah, I am Umar Farouk Muhammad. I am Umar Farouk Muhammad, a Muslim, and uh, this is my question. Thank you. I was born and raised up in this neighborhood and have been living with my uh, sister religion the Christian and have attended their program so many times and uh, in their teachings they used to say that Jesus Christ is the founder of Christianity and also that Jesus Christ is a Christian that Jesus Christ is a Christian and I don't know how true that is and I told you, next question. And as such, that Jesus Christ is a Christian. If that statement is not true, then who is the founder of the religion of Christianity? And what religion is Jesus Christ? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. They asked a very important question. The question my brother just asked now, because uh, of Christianity in the Bible. C H R I S T I A N I T Y Christianity. Where is it indicated in the Bible? Nowhere. If Christianity was the religion of God, God would have mentioned it by name. If it was the religion of Jesus, practiced by Jesus, Jesus would have mentioned it and he would have even invited the people you know to believe in Christianity. But Jesus never mentioned a religion called Christianity. You know? Christianity, look, look, Christianity, even according to the Christians, they say that it was not a religion, that it was, you know, uh, 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 it was a relationship. That is how they did. So it was not a religion. I even met a pastor that made this same statement. Because they know that this Christianity is not in the Bible. Going to church is not in the Bible. Practicing Christmas on the 25th of December is not in the Bible. The observance of Easter Friday or Good Friday is not in the Bible. Dancing and singing in the church. Dancing. Our Father in heaven, we glorify your holy name. We bow down. Our Father in heaven, we glorify your name. We bow down before you. We bow down before you. We bow down before you. simple question. I want to ask this simple question. Please, did Jesus Christ dance? Did Jesus dance? Did Jesus sing? Did Jesus play music in the church? Or in the synagogue? Who show you how to dance?
than Jesus? It's unbiblical. It's an innovation. It's unbiblical. It's unscriptural. We are showing you how to serve and worship the Almighty God. Yes. You worship God Almighty in spirit and in truth. Jesus prayed with his face to the ground. Before the Almighty God, he worshiped God. Because now God sent and come. Adi? Yes, sir. Now God sent and come. Are you not there? A man who took an is not there. Now, sir, now, sir. You see? So Jesus was sent by the Almighty God as a messenger of God. You know? And Jesus, you know, practiced the religion of God. What is that religion? Islam. Islam. Is Islam in the Quran or not? It's in the Quran, in different places, ordained by the Almighty God. Then the, the first question you ask me about the actual teacher of Jesus. Then we have been seeing the Christians moving with some pictures, believing that picture to be the original or the actual picture of Jesus. Some different pictures, different. Sometimes you see him as a child in the hands of his mother. Sometimes you see him with the, uh, his long hair, sometimes with short hair, sometimes you see him like this on the cross with pants. Sometimes you see him like this. Is it the actual picture of Jesus? Please, we want to know the photographer. Who was that existing photographer that's not that picture of Jesus? That is not Jesus we are working about. That is not Jesus we are working with. That is not Jesus. That is not the picture of Jesus. You should go and ask questions in your church. Where did they get this picture? Different pictures. They are not the picture of Jesus. And even if a Christian said that he dreamed about Jesus, that is the picture he took because he has been addicted to that particular picture. It has been conjured up in his mind that that is the picture right from his own childhood. So he believed that that is Jesus. So whenever he said, oh, Yesterday I don't see Jesus from my dream. Now that picture. <laughs> that is why, you know, they say Christianity is a mask on the face of Jesus. And a mask that has been worn for a long time acquires a life of ignorance. Therefore, go and find out the religion of Jesus. There are various books and cassettes. You can get those books and cassettes, read them. You know, and you will know a lot of things that you wanted to know. Okay. Ask the next question. Uh, my Christian brother, I beg, make you know shy. Just come outside. Because this question, me, I will not be asked the question. But if you can ask them, I don't say they listen. If you can ask the question, I will ask. The brother, I know I'll come out because I, the push and go back. You know, I mean, I push and come front because they push and go back. Why be say I will be Christian and I believe in my religion? And they're going to talk about that. For our side, I got the fear. Ah, now you say that believe, eh? Uh, that's why they do great question mark. My brother can say, now two talk, you talk, say Jesus will go to church on Sunday. Yeah. He said, now two talk, say you believe him. He said, now even the Bible. Allah, Allah. But God talk something, he's going to fall on the day. Okay. Because then, now on Saturday, now Jesus go to church. <laughs> Let that Christian come and point in the Bible where Jesus go to church on Saturday. Saturday was the Sabbath day for the Jews. You don't work on that particular day. It was the Sabbath day before the advent of Jesus Christ alayhi salam. Before Jesus Christ came into the world. But where did Jesus say you should go to church on Saturday? Please, where is that again? Where, where is it mentioned in the Bible? That you should go to church on Saturday. Look, look, Jesus did not even establish a single church. Jesus did not even establish a single church. And he never asked anybody to go to church. Jesus had a religion. And what is the religion of Jesus? The religion of total submission and obedience to the commandment of God. He served and worshiped the Almighty God. And that is that. Yes. Uh, you can't pray on the teacher for church. Yeah. 
in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 14. 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 Matthew Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Let me finish, please. Let me finish my explanation before you ask. I don't want to. Listen. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. All praise be unto God, the Lord of the world. The Almighty God, the Lord of the world. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Malik Yawmiddi, the owner of the day of judgment. Iya kana abudu wa iya kana sa'in. You alone will worship, and you alone will ask for help. In the last Shirat al-Mustaqim, guide us unto the right path. Shirat al-Nazina al-Amta alayhim, the path of those whom you have shown your favor. Guide us unto the right path. Not the part of those who cause your anger. What a darling! No, the part of those who go after it. This is the supplication that the Muslim used to do day in and day out, every day, prayer to the Almighty God. We have five daily prayers that we used to do every day, morning, afternoon, morning, noon, afternoon, evening, night, apart from the other obligatory prayers. Because the purpose of our creation is to serve and worship the Almighty God. No. And how do we worship God Almighty? Do we worship God Almighty by dancing like Hare Krishna people? Or do we worship God Almighty by standing, bowing and prostrating? It is not the way you want to serve and worship God that matters. But the way God Almighty wants you to worship Him. And God has sent His prophet to teach you how to serve and worship God. If you follow your own ways, I worship God in your own way. God will not accept it because He is not the one that asks you to do. use that kind of system to worship Him. You know, God sent a messenger to teach you how to serve and worship Him. And we have just shown you how to serve and worship the Almighty God. The Almighty God that has no beginning of life, no end of life. Mm -hmm. What is He saying? Well, uh, you know, just come out now to say that uh, you believe in Sabbath day. He never said that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ goes to church on Saturday, but Sabbath Okay, he never go. He never, okay, in the Sabbath day, when you asked to go to church on, on Sabbath day, on Saturday, the Sabbath day of the Jews, when you ask, when you ask, that is the question. When you ask to go to church on Saturday, Yes, uh, my brother is coming out of it. Come on, throw more light to the question. No, see, you know, Friday and the morning Sabbath day. Mm. And God said, eh, I like of the finger, say, Nikki, or Zan, the Sabbath day. What? Let's watch after 20, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Read and read. No, I say the question, listen to the question. We are not saying that there was no Sabbath day, the day of the Jews, before the coming of Jesus. I hope you understand. I say, did Jesus say you should go to church on Sabbath day? I, I am not saying that the Sabbath day is not there. Did God say you should not go there on Saturday? You should go to church on Saturday? That is the question. Did Jesus also say that you should go to church on Saturday as the Muslims are asked to go to mosque on Friday? That is the question. That you should go to church on Saturday. Okay, bring the Bible and let him read it. You quoted the book of Ezra chapter 25 verse 8. Ezra chapter 20 verse 8. Fire. Okay. They were asked to go to church on on Saturday. To go to church on Saturday. Now we want to see it. As much as 20 verse 8 says, mm. Remember the Sabbath day, mm. keep it holy. Mm. The sixth day shall thou labor and do all their work. Mm. For the seventh day is the Sabbath day of the Lord, mm -hmm. their God. Mm -hmm. in, it, in it thou shalt not do any work. Thou shalt not do any work. Not their son, not their son, mm -hmm. not their doctor, mm -hmm. not their mess servant, mm -hmm. not their 
no, no, sorry, not the master one, mm -hmm. not the master one, mm -hmm. not the cattle, mm -hmm. not the stranger mm -hmm. that is with him. Mm -hmm. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. And in the seventh day he rested. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the sea mm -hmm. and all that in them is and rested the seventh day. Mm -hmm. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Amen. Hey, what, what did God say you should not do on the Sabbath day? <coughs> no work, nothing. You will just stay there, nothing. So, uh, that, uh, you didn't uh, say you should go to church. That answered the question. That has answered the question. On the Sabbath day, no work, no church, no, nothing. We believe in Jesus. Is there any Muslim that does not believe in Jesus? No. All the Muslims in the world believe in Jesus. His name is Isa in the Quran. All the miracles that Jesus performed on earth, even the miracles that are not recorded in the Bible, they are recorded in the Quran. Yes. The first miracle that Jesus did on earth was to speak to the people the very day he was born. This miracle is not in the Bible. Apart from raising the dead, curing the blind, walking on the water, and so many other miracles. And the Bible says that there were many other miracles, signs and wonders that Jesus did in the presence of his disciples which are not recorded in the Bible. John chapter 20 verse 30. Therefore, if you want to know this unrecorded miracle of Jesus, you have to travel outside the Bible before you get there. Come to the Quran and you will see a lot of miracles. The Muslim believe in Jesus as a prophet of God. Jesus is a prophet of God. I quoted the verses of the Bible. Matthew chapter 21 verses 10 to 11. Matthew chapter 21 verse 46. Luke chapter 24 verse 19. Luke chapter 13 verse 32 to 33. Luke chapter 7 verse 16. Mark chapter 6 verse 4. John chapter 6 verse 14. Address Jesus as a prophet of God. Can a prophet of God be God? <laughs> and the Christians are telling us that Jesus is the Son of God. Please, how many people in the Bible are called the Son of God? Even before Jesus. Listen. In Ezra chapter 4 verse 22, Israel is called the Son of God. In Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 9, Israel is called the Son of God. In Job chapter 2 verse 1 and Job chapter 1 verse 6, the angels are called the sons and daughters of God. In Luke chapter 3 verse 38, Adam is called the Son of God. In Psalm chapter 68 verse 5, the Bible says the father of the fatherless is God. Five. In John chapter 20 verse 17, Mary Magdalene is called the daughter of God. Six. In Ezra chapter 14, in Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 1, the Israelites, the Jews, are called the sons of God. Seven. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 9, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Mm. <coughs> In Romans chapter 8 verse 14, the Bible says, as many as are guided by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of, and daughters of God. Yeah. Please, how many sons have God? Many. How many sons? Nine. What is the meaning of this? Even Melchizedek, if you read somebody called Melchizedek in the Bible, Hebrews chapter 7 verse 23, he has no father, he has no mother, he has no son, he has no daughter, he has no beginning, he has no end. Yet the Bible called him what? The son of God. That is the reality. You see? So therefore, if you have questions, please come and ask your question. Any question? Uh, we thank Allah. Please, my sister, you have questions. You want to talk? You want to ask questions? She said the question is with me. What can you come forward and ask somebody? Okay. Can we have the Sahabi? He said, what did Prophet Muhammad preach? or prophesied about Jesus. Yes, uh, I think you were not there when we mentioned the Quran. Thank you, you asked a very good question. She said, what did Prophet Muhammad said about Jesus? Before I tell you briefly, you know Jesus said that somebody is coming after me in John chapter 16, verse 12 to 14. And when he comes, he will tell you many things about me. Now, in the Quran, where is the Quran? Huh? In the Quran, listen, in the Quran, Quran chapter 19, listen, Quran chapter 19, we are told about how Jesus Christ was born. 
And even the miracles that Jesus did that are not recorded in the Bible. Don't know what that. Even the miracles that Jesus did that are not recorded in the Bible. So many other miracles that are not recorded in the Bible, Prophet Muhammad mentioned them. Because Jesus said when that prophet comes, he will tell us many things about him. Then Prophet Muhammad tell us about how Mary, the mother of Jesus, was born. God revealed that knowledge to him in the Holy Quran. How Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, was born. Don't distract our attention. How Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, was born is mentioned in the Quran, but it's not mentioned in the Bible. You know, the Holy Quran tells us many things about Jesus Christ, and we have presented them here. You know, uh, that, uh, that was the beginning of our lecture. How Mary, the mother of Jesus, was born. You know, how Mary, the mother of Jesus, was put in the temple. How the angel of God visited Mary. How they announced to her the birth of Jesus Christ. What happened when Jesus Christ was born. How Jesus was able to defend his mother. And so many other things like that are mentioned in the Holy Quran. Holy Quran. And that is the reason why the Muslims believe in Jesus. The Muslims do not have to read the Bible before they believe in Jesus. We read the Quran, we believe in Jesus. All the Muslims in the world. Then the only thing we are telling the people is that Jesus is not the Almighty God. Then he was sent by the Almighty God. He was a messenger of the Almighty God. The Almighty God has no sons and daughters. He has no wife. He has no brother. He has no sister. He has no beginning of life. He has no end of life. It's not a human being. God never resembles human beings. God is the one that created Jesus without a father. God is the one that created Eve, the wife of Adam, without a mother. God is the one that created Adam without a mother and without a mother, without a father. God is the one that created the angels without parents. God is the one that created the heavens, the earth, the mountains, the oceans, the animals, both the one in the water and the one on land. God is the one that created everything. And we are inviting people to stop and worship the Almighty God. That is the God of Jesus, the God of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet Muhammad was the prophet that came after Jesus. If you don't believe in Prophet Muhammad, it means that you don't believe in Jesus. It means that you don't believe in Moses. The same thing with the Jews. The Jews said that they believe in Moses, but they don't believe in Jesus. Jesus told them in John chapter 5 verse 46, that if you believe in Moses, you will have believed in me. But if you don't believe in me, how would you tell me that you believe in Moses? Because all the prophets of God are one. Adam, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, Elijah, Elisha, Zachariah, John the Baptist, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Job, Jonah, David, Solomon, Jeremiah, and so many other prophets of God, including Jesus and Muhammad, they were all sent by the Almighty God. Uh, finally, I hope you are your daughter. Please do ask me about the real Yatahamana Shaitan and Rajin. And I seek refuge, O oh Allah, from you. You know? For her and her progeny against the devil, the apostle. So she prayed for her daughter, newly born baby, Maryam, 